data around. We've got Paul McKessel here, who's the CEO of, of Clustrix. Paul, thanks for coming on. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, Paul's actually a, uh, one of the co-founders of Isilon right. Systems, just got bought out by uh, EMC. Big data play, we heard a lot about that two weeks ago, didn't we, John? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, you're, I'm psyched to have you on because you could talk about a couple different things from many perspectives. One, you've been an entrepreneur, successful. Obviously, Isilon, great founding of a huge exit, you know, billions of dollars sold to EMC. Um, you formed Clusterx in tw uh, 2006. Uh, again, another startup. Yeah. Yeah, Raised yeah. a bunch of money. Sure. You got clients. You guys are very successful. Great reputation in the industry. Um, and you're sitting at the doorstep of this mega trend, cloud, yeah. and growth in applications. So, uh, you know, I think we can talk about a lot of things. But you know, first thing is, uh, as an entrepreneur, how do you feel right now in this environment? I mean, you guys have raised like $30 million. Uh, you got customers, you're producing product. Uh, what's the state of the market in your mind? For, for being an entrepreneur, especially in, in big data, uh, I think there's never been a time better than right now. Um, what we have is a situation where folks are trying to build uh, large scale uh, internet sites that are trying to grow to the size of the entire world for their customer base. Um, the challenge about how do you go from systems that were developed to be single server type of solutions to something that can scale across uh, multiple boxes, across rows of racks in a data center, across yeah. multiple data centers, how do you do that? So it's all about, from our perspective, uh, clustering, scale out instead of having to scale up. Um, fault tolerance comes from clustering, um, easy scalability, adding nodes into a live cluster for scalability on the fly uh, are all key concepts. Uh, things we did at uh, Isilon for unstructured file storage and the things we're developing, pioneering, and have built at Clustrix for structured database storage. And you built a lot of that at Isilon mm -hmm. into the into the software, yes, right? I mean, that sure. was really kind of the secret sauce. Yeah. And yes, and right. and so now you're 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 a clustered database innovator. Mm -hmm. So talk about why the world needs another database. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So to date, all of the relational database systems that are on the market are single instance kind of things. They're not truly clustered, they're not truly scalable. So what happens is your only option for growth is to buy a bigger, more expensive piece of hardware, uh, get more specialized, and uh, get off of the commodity hardware curve and go into something very expensive to, to remain on these systems. Um, the other, the alternative to that has been a very intensive development effort uh, loan, uh, known uh, largely in, in the industry as sharding where you essentially break your data apart into individual database systems and you lose all of that relational context. So everything that the database was doing for you falls apart uh, in this new world. So um, Clusterix, for the first time, brings the ability to scale out and maintain all of that relational database semantics that has been you know, growing with the growth of data over the last 30 years. So, so tie that to this whole big data theme, right? Because mm -hmm. you, you, you think about big data, you think about you know, shared nothing, mm -hmm. you think about distributed mm -hmm. yeah. you know, storage and MapReduce, mm -hmm. and yep. how do you guys fit and how do you add value? Yeah, that that's concept? a great question. So, um, related to what MapReduce does for distribution of processing power on large data sets, what Clustrix does is we bring the query to the data in a cluster instead of the data to the query. So it's very much in that similar theme of parallel, massively parallel processing mm -hmm. across clustered elements. Uh, the difference that Clustrix brings is that we are very focused on high performance OLTP, so lots of high transaction rates, lots and lots of concurrent users, um, in a system that looks exactly like what used to be there but failed to scale. Uh, so one of the interesting and very compelling parts of our product is that we also emulate and look just like a MySQL server on the wire. So there's no need to change your application, modify the way that it works, um, do anything special to get scalability and fault tolerance. Uh, just with Clusterix, we slot right in and now you can scale and grow. And uh, this uh, thing we were just talking about, bringing the query to the data, allows you to continually scale out to tens, hundreds of nodes in a single cluster with no single point of failure and no uh, asymptote in the scalability. And so we have published uh, a couple of different performance results um, that show uh, linear scalability, continuing to add nodes, and it just keeps scaling. Excellent, so, uh, so I have to ask you, so John was asking you about mm -hmm. entrepreneurialism mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. um, 
Are, are you going to hire a CEO or a VP of engineering? That's what I want to know. Oh, that's yeah. an interesting, because my, yeah, so my car today, uh, CEO and VP of engineering, we'll see how things uh, progress. There are a lot of So I'm discussions. watching you, my kid's out there, I told you before, my kid's out there, I got to give a shout out to Roman, Roman Volante, he's a, he's a, he's a math whiz, yeah, he's an okay. engineer, I'm like, look, this is the time mm -hmm. to really go hard after mm -hmm. the alpha geek stuff, sure, right? Sure, sure. Look at this, successful entrepreneur. Sure, it's a math environment, yeah. I mean, yeah, data, very much so. it's math driven, it's all it's very math. true, and there has been a change I think in recent years, um, you know, driven largely by the success of uh, things like Y Combinator to really uh, push more towards technical based um, leadership in technical companies. And that seems to make a lot of sense uh, and continues to drive innovation and, and make product fit and company fit uh, align with what people are. And you're for. seeing a lot more of that, right? Mm -hmm. Where you've got technical people now, you know, coming in. And, and actually running companies. Mm -hmm. You, you can't right. go the other way. You can't have a business person go That's into right. technology. That would be a, a mess. It's true. But, but totally different disciplines. I mean, VP engineering, I mean, you're focused on products, you're focused sure. on timelines and, and, and yeah. prioritization. It's true. And, and I guess there's, there's some of that, obviously, in mm -hmm. the business side, but contrast the skill sets. Yeah, 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 that's a great question. I mean, I have to give a lot of credit for the navigation of that roadmap, right, from an engineer, engineering with my background, towards you know, technology leadership and then company leadership uh, to uh, our uh, our investors, our, our VCs, uh, Sequoia Capital, US Venture Partners, ATA Ventures, uh, the folks at Y Combinator, um, people like Don Listwin, who's on our board, has been very helpful in that. And even my uh, co-founder um, at Isilon, Sujal Patel, was, you know, very, very helpful in sort of Showing me that. Is Y Combinator an investor? Is it, uh, an investor in Clusterx, yes. At the beginning, or they come in later? The very beginning, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, were you one of the first classes of uh, the Y Combinator? Uh, or? Second class, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Sergey, Sergey, Sergey Saryov, who's my uh, co founder, was uh, uh, at Clusterx, was the uh, one in the second Y Combinator class. Cool. Yeah. What about the. Um, the role of databases now. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously with open source, I mean, anyone can walk into White Comet and now they're handing out money yeah. for yeah. being in class on every thousand dollars. You know, so it kind of brings this you know mm -hmm. new new collegiate environment mm -hmm. to entrepreneurship. But you know, open source like MySQL mm -hmm. and all the you know Memcache, all these tools, sure. yeah. they're great. I can start stuff. I can start a fire yep. and build up some yep. momentum. Launch True. an app on iTunes and, and launch and right. have mm -hmm. somewhat scale. Right. But right. You guys address that, right? So, like, my challenge is if our blog gets bigger and bigger, you know, it's all open source. Mm -hmm. It's like, shit, I got to rewrite the whole thing. I don't want to take it out of production. Right. I don't right. want to have five yeah. zillion databases. Yeah, and exactly, and know. that was why we decided yeah. to support the the MySQL uh, protocol on the wire, so that people can do things like start with a a lamp stack, right, a more traditional open source stack, and when you get to the point where scalability becomes an issue. Uh, clusters can show up and and uh, slot right in without having to change the application. So you can still run essentially a LAMP stack, but now you get scalability uh, and fault tolerance using Clusterix uh, instead of the MySQL portion. So you guys, typical startup, you do a lot mm -hmm. of good work. You're probably doing proof of concepts early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got some good tech and yeah, you know, good sure. team. Obviously, biased engineering since you're the CEO. I'm sure they got all better bonuses than the other guys. But, <laughs> but uh, um, talk about the clients you're announcing. Mm -hmm. You guys just recently announced talking to your, your uh, colleague. Sure, yeah. Um, you guys have announced some serious customers. Yeah, that's right. Can that's you right. announce them? AOL? AOL so AOL. Box.net. Box.net. Uh, Photobox. Um, and uh, iOffer. And iOffer. And then we have a number of other ones that that uh, that, we, that have become customers uh, since those announcements, and we will continue to make yeah, so rolling you, announcements. So you, you get the customers, but you mm -hmm. had them for a while. Finally, they get the legal signs sure. off on right. it, and you can right, say right. things. Can you talk about them and like what is AOL? How are mm -hmm. they using? Because that's not a startup. I mean, they're yeah. still at scale. Right. How are they leveraging Clusterx to say a startup that's a growing? Sure. I think I think it's. Uh, the AOL stuff might be a little uh, uh, sensitive for us to discuss, but I can certainly talk about. Well, they some got the other their ones. whole product plans on the web yesterday. <laughs> sure, <so>. right, <laughs> insider. Uh, sure, um, and and uh, actually, you know what? I, I think I would prefer to do is let those guys talk about their use of Clusterix um, on their own blogs, because a lot of these folks are starting to uh, are come out and talk about. This they are stuff. talking about it. They are starting on, to talk about on this the stuff. AOL blog. <laughs> not uh, not AOL, but the other ones. Okay. Um, and so we should uh, we should maybe follow up and, okay. and go back through that. Um, so a lot of this is, you know, technology leadership on their part also, right? Having the foresight to realize where the technology that they had been living with was sort of falling apart, uh, not scaling, not growing, and looking for alternatives and finding uh, Clusterix as the alternative that really allowed them to get through their, their roadblocks. Um, 
you know, it, it uh, exhibits a, an incredible amount of foresight and um, uh, due diligence on their part to even, you know, find Clustrix at the time that they were doing that. So, right? let's, so we were relatively so under the radar. So without talking specifics mm -hmm. uh, in terms of companies, can you mm -hmm. talk about some use cases and, and, sure. and help, yeah. help the audience go through, okay, so there, how do you? How should they expect to use it? What are they going to do to mm -hmm. actually bring yeah. it in and adopt it? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So what infrastructure needs to go right. in? Right. Typical use case is you've got a application that has some amount of relational data in it. So you've got users in your database that are doing things with other users. So they might be trading objects or selling things to one another or doing things like having permissions on different objects, different videos or photos that they're allowed to see. So it's about uh, sharing and um, information and relationships through the social graph. That is a lot of what initially brings folks to, to clustering. So mm -hmm. what happens is the application is, is, is using the relational database to maintain all of these relational pieces of information and that those queries are, are usually done through SQL, which is one of the interfaces that we support. And what happens is over time that database now gets too loaded to be able to be run. There's too much pressure being put on the database to be able to be run on a single box anymore. Um, and this is why you see folks, when they start to grow, when their websites start to really grow and scale, they slow down, can't handle the traffic, uh, have failures, get hung up, that kind of thing. So Clustrix is designed to alleviate all that pressure with really no change at all to the application, uh, no change to the way that they uh, work with the systems. Um, adding Clustrix is as simple as plugging in the boxes, turning them on, and connecting to it as if it was a database. So when you say plug in the boxes, you're talking about it comes in an appliance. That's right? correct, yes. So, so we talk about why appliance, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and take us through. A lot of the IT guys sure. don't uh, say appliance a lot. Mm -hmm. There's real benefits, yeah. you know, there's some concerns. T talk through yeah. some of that dialogue. Yeah, actually, um, Aaron Passy, our CTO, who, by the way, was also the chief architect at Isilon, um, has a great post on our blog about why an appliance. Uh, and I'll just sort of run uh, quickly through that. Um, so an appliance allows us to have uh, all the way from the lowest level drivers in the operating system all the way up through the software stack to the very top interface of the database uh, be completely optimized for that piece of hardware. Completely optimized for uh, performance and even for failure characteristics. So what happens when, di when the storage system uh, deals with a drive failure, that kind of thing. For recovery. Yeah, our system handles all of that uh, and, and knows what to expect at different points along the way when disks fail or networks fail, that kind of thing. So what you get from Clusterx is a system that understands uh, out of the box its own environment and cr can react to things that happen in the course of in the course of infrastructure build out in the course of life. Um, uh, so uh, then additionally, uh, there's not any question about um, you know what kind of hardware are you going to have to requisition and what kind of operating system to install and, and patches and all yeah. that stuff. We, uh, we take care of all that stuff and just make it very, very simple. It's designed to be the easiest thing in the world to use. Install it, let it scale, and be fault, be fault tolerant for you, and then you can move on to other things. Uh, so most of, these, most of these folks, what they really want to do is develop their application, uh, add new features for their users, uh, and worrying about the database layer is something that should have been solved and hadn't been, and so we really attack this problem. Uh, based on the failure that we saw in the industry to address scalable data. So it's another point of management, but it's just that. It's one point of management mm -hmm. as opposed to all these bespoke pieces. Yeah, it, that's exactly right. That's okay. exactly right. Great. So um, just on Clusterix, where do you see the Clusterix in the next five years? I mean, do you see it? What's your vision? I mean, you obviously started it because you had a passion mm -hmm. for this whole database sure. and the growth side of its scale. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see in five years? Sure. What's so, your ambition? Yeah, I mean, so Isilon was a company that we started for unstructured data for file storage. Um, you know, we went public after uh, five or five and a half years. Uh, and then EMC uh, made a very great, you know, intelligent purchase on, on their part. Um, in December, bought Isilon for just over $2 billion. I know you're biased, but I agree, by the yeah, way. I thanks, actually think it was thanks, a great yeah, purchase. Yeah, so. Um, really, really smart. And in the unstructured data space, that made a lot of sense. So in the structured relational data space, we see Clusterix doing the exact same thing. Uh, we have, um, by many analysts' opinion, a much larger market in the relational data space than in the file space. Um, more intelligence that needs to go into the query planning of relational database queries as opposed to uh, simpler file queries. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so 
there is uh, I mean, there's people a direction are, people are mashing up the direction. database environment. If you look at, let's say, Facebook, mm -hmm. for example. You know, they do a lot of things with their photos and the mm -hmm. Haystack projects we're well known about. Sure. So mm -hmm. the system software mm -hmm. is a hack in a way, but now it can't be a hack. You need to have mm -hmm. the scale That's out right. mentality around the structured data. That's right. That's Not just right. the unstructured, but like That's right. the real production. That's right. And and um, you know, we see ourselves as preventing people from having to go through the kinds of growing pains that some of those earlier uh, pioneers had to go through. Some of the folks that to write their own yeah, system some software. of the folks at Facebook they had to do incredible you know feats of engineering to be able to get through that stuff uh, through those growth growth phases. And we see ourselves as enabling um, other folks to be able to get through that without having can to they still code? Can they still code? So you save, so you know, basically you save a lot of time, mm -hmm. benefit to the, your clients. Time and risk and, and uh, diversion and all kinds of things we save them from. You know? And so can they still code with your system? So if I want to do a little bit of Facebook mm -hmm. hacking like environment, like yeah, for my environment, mm -hmm. we can still do that with Sure, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the um, just because the database is now scalable doesn't mean that there aren't uh, more interesting things you can continue to do on top in the in the application stack. What's your assessment of big data? I mean, we ask all the CEOs mm -hmm. that come in here, what's big data? I mean, mm -hmm. everyone's it's like Web 2.0. Yeah, sure. Everyone's got a different definition. Sure. What's your 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 take? Or if someone sees you at a cocktail party. Yeah, hey, sure. you know, tell me about this big data thing. What's going on with this stuff? Right. We, I mean, we've we've talked a lot uh, today about uh, the internet sites because that's our initial focus. But beyond that, even in in a lot of the more traditional enterprises and and things like medical research, genomics. Um, in a lot of the places, uh, financial markets, uh, things like high frequency mm -hmm. trading, right? You're talking about being able to capture and manage uh, as much data as you can because it's not just the individual pieces that have value, it's the, it's the aggregate uh, in total picture of what is happening in whatever segment you're tracking that adds the real value, right? So that is why, and, and we're, we're, we're reaching the point now with the size and speed of these computer technologies that we can actually hold that in our hands and manage it and control it. Right? So that is where uh, big data is coming from. That's where it's continuing to go. Internet is just one space yeah, yeah. out of the entire swath that is really uh, being enabled by where things are at. Today. So what's going to happen uh, in your mind, final question, mm -hmm. Mike, at the top of the stack? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, virtualization, all these kind of mm -hmm. plumbing uh, activities enable the next layer up, database, middleware, sure. I'm oversimplifying it. but. Mm -hmm. But that's what you're providing. You're enabling up scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and data is a big yeah. part of that, and et cetera. We're, yeah, we're trying to let uh, people get out of the business of worrying about their own. What's going to happen up there at the stack? Mm -hmm. Applications. I see mm -hmm. iTunes is a great, you know, app store is a poster child for mm -hmm. growth. I mean, mm -hmm. Angry Birds comes sure. out of nowhere. It's a zillion mm -hmm. you know, yeah. people using it. Mm -hmm. I bet business is going to do that. What's going to? What's your vision for the next, you know, five years or so in the top of the stack? Mm -hmm. Virtualization at the desktop, an application integration. What's Mm -hmm. What's your angle on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, we see lots of different things with, um, so for example, um, dealing with file storage in, an, in a corporation, how do you uh, pass files back and forth between your different offices, make sure they're tracked, uh, secure, all that kind of stuff, was traditionally an in-house IT manager's um, uh, thing to deal with, right? Um, there's, in some cases, the real bane of their job, right? But now with folks like uh, Box.net providing uh, secure file storage between folks and focusing on uh, enterprise as a large part of their target, uh, we see uh, we see people being able to sort of outsource. This is IT the, as a service. Yeah, exactly. This is IT as exactly a service. Exactly right. IT as a service. That's a big trend. You see that done deal. Absolutely. You see that happening. Absolutely. Yep. Cool. Okay. We are.